Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase a simple example of how we can create a Postgres database inside the Docker container. And I'll let's simply go through the process of creating the image, build a container from this image, insert some SQL into this image, and we're then going to go through into the running container and take a look at this data just to make sure everything is set up correctly. And indirectly, when doing this, we're going to be exposing our database to some kind of port locally. So if we're working some, some kind of basic project, we would be able to access this database on this local port. But first of all, I have a Docker file where we get it from our Postgres base image. So we're using like this base image from the Docker Hub Postgres. So we have everything set up more or less already. We then simply define some environment variables, a password, and we create a database. We then copy an SQL file into this Docker entry point initialized DB folder which will then, whenever our Postgres SQL database have been initialized, it will then run this SQL file. And in our case, just simply create a table called accounts. And we're going to insert some dummy data into this account table, just so we can take a look at it later. Let's get started actually building our Docker container. So first, I will just open my integrated terminal inside Visual Studio Code. I will then just simply do Docker build. And I'll just give it a name. So we're just going to call it Postgres DB. And we're going to be building it from the current position because I'm already inside this folder containing this Docker file. And because I actually tried running this before, I have like a copy somewhere locally of this Postgres image. So you might actually have to wait a few more seconds for this to run. But for me, it's quite quickly. We can then simply do Docker images and we now have this postgres db image i would then build this image and expose it to a local port and it end up looking like this so first we had our image which was our postgres db we then simply to run this image to create a container we do docker run dash d for dormant mode so it's going to be running in the background so we can keep working inside this terminal we then give the container a name i'm just going to call it my postgres db container we then have a port where it is defined that inside postgres it's going to be exposing internally to port 5432 and i'm just going to re-expose this port from postgres to also like the external port of the container 5432 so in the case where I was working on some kind of backend project, just locally, I would simply have to connect on this port if I wanted to connect to my Postgres database. And we'll just simply define, so docker run dormant name, exposing of the ports, and we're just going to run it from this Postgres DB image. And it's going to take a few seconds. We get this information of its running. We can now do docker container ls to see we have this running container and we can also see that it's exposing from its internal port to 000 so localhost port 5432 and so now it's working but what then how do i actually know it works in this case well i'm not actually going to be connecting some kind of backend we can then go inside the container and have a look and we can do docker exec interact mode and we are then going to be doing it into this container so let's see it is going to be named let's just take the id that's easier and it works every time so docker exec interact mode this container with this id and we're then going to run run bin slash bash so what we're technically just doing is saying connect to this container and in my case run this command which simply will give me access to a terminal inside the Docker container. So we can do ls. And we can actually now see that we have this Docker entry point initialized db folder, which we just defined previously, where we would like to copy our user.sql into. So if we actually just go into this folder, take a look, we actually have this user.sql file. And then I'm just cut it to take a look if it's the same. And it is. But what we actually want to do is we want to go into the Postgres database. So now we're just into the container, but to access the database, we can do psql-u 
So we're accessing like PostgreSQL and we're going to be using a specific user. In this case, I'm just going to be using Postgres, which is kind of like a base user. And as you can see now, we're actually inside Postgres, the Postgres database inside our container. And then using some basic Postgres symbol, like some of these quick commands, we do like backslash L to get a list of all the running databases we have. So we have some basic Postgres, some templates, and we then also have our user, which is the one we created. We can then do backslash C to connect to our user database. So we do backslash C user. You are now connected to the database user. I will then do and just doing control L to move everything up. We can then do actually SQL commands. We do select. Oh, let's actually like first just take a look at DZ. So that is kind of taking a look at all the tables inside our database. So we can see we have one like, thing in this database, which is a public name accountants, and it's a table, and it's owned by Postgres, so kind of like the basic user. We could then do select all from accounts. that and here I actually got an error because before I was doing clear and remember when we inside some kind of like database SQL environment we need to end with a semicolon so it's confused so let me actually just do it again so we're doing select all from account semicolon and as you can see we then get this table look where we have the user ID of one the first user we added we have the user pass the email created on last login has been added and this is exactly what we manually injected or put inside our SQL file. As you can see here, user pass test email current timestamp, which is kind of like a command or method we can use inside SQL just to get the current time to just define whenever something was created. So that is kind of the walkthrough of what I would do to set up a Postgres SQL database inside Docker. And of course, I'm going to leave all these commands in the description so you can have a look at them yourself. And I might also just simply leave this basic Docker file setup in the description because it's actually just quite simple. But just understand what we're doing. We have a basic Docker file. We then first build Docker file to create an image. From this image, we then run a container with some exposing ports. And in my case, what we did is then simply go into, interact with the container, to then go into the Docker environment. And from this Docker environment, we then access directly into our Postgres database. And we can then using either some SQL commands like select and some Postgres fancy stuff using like the backslash L to see also databases or backslash C to connect, access and use a specific database. And in this case, we can see that everything's in here. And if we then just have some kind of backend setup, we can use the port to connect and it should work as intended. So if you enjoyed this relatively quick demonstration of how we can set up a Postgres inside Docker and actually interact with it, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.